Welcome back, Zero K fans! We're gonna be going to replays now. I did a couple FP VODs, and those were... Yeah, I'm not that great at this game. What the? One, I'm not that great at this game, and two, Twitch is being a pain, apparently. I tell it to update, and it doesn't update. I don't know what's going on with this stupid thing sometimes. Anyway. So I'm going to be... Doing a replay. First replay is going to be between Storage and the Sponge. Storage is also known as El Torero. So we have seen him before. In case you are wondering the name is not familiar, it's because he has changed his name. Because a lot of 0k players like to compulsively rename themselves. He was actually called Warlock beforehand. Now he is called Storage. We're going to be on Trojan Hills, which as I mentioned before is my favorite map. So let's begin. So, storage starting out in the south side of the map, and the sponge starting out in the north side of the map. Sponge going cloakies, and storage going for shields. Which, not at all surprising, this map is fairly hilly. It's not the most hilly map, so you can get away with vehicles, but apparently neither player really wants to do so. We are seeing a bot versus bot match, and I think on this map, given the size of it, the store, I think the sponge is a bit of an advantage. Cloakies do move faster than shields. The main thing is going to be whether or not Storage is able to get a ball rolling, as it were, across the map. It is kind of difficult for Cloakies to deal with shield balls, but certainly not impossible. By no stretch of the imagination is it impossible to be dealt with. Apparently, snipers do quite well against them. But even then, the fact is that on this map, raiding is going to be probably a bit easier for the Sponge than for Storage. We'll see how it goes, and first raid starts up! Or first, well, Battle of Raider starts up. Sponge disengages with his Glaives, try to, tries to avoid the Bandit. Bandits are individually more powerful than Glaives. Though Glaives will basically match Bandits for cost. However, Bandits do heal slower, apparently. And the Glaives coming back in after healing up themselves. Because Glaives do automatically heal. They automatically regenerate their own health. And that will be a solid win for the Sponge. So early on, however, the Sponge is going to not be able to get into storage bases too easily. The Lotus and the Commander are right in the way of the west side of the base. Going from the east side would actually be a good weak point, but the Sponge does not know that. He is going in from the west instead, and he's going to run right into the Commander. It's a Commander Junior, so no need to morph to get the weapon. However, it doesn't have an E-cell or anything. But right now, Storage is relying on these wind generators for power, while the Sponge, on the other hand, has merely morphed his Commander. Getting a single E-cell. That is now the popular thing to do, is... Pure E cell commander. I mentioned it before, it's come up in a couple casts, but yeah, it's now the popular thing to do. No weapon, just E cell, because you get your energy that much faster. The weapons, I think the E cell is like 100 metal, and okay, you can't easily zoom here. I think it's 100 metal for the E cell alone, and weapons usually add another 200 or so on top of that. I mean, even if it's even, it's still cheaper. Anyway, another battle is joined. Storage coming in with Glaze. Glaze are not in a good position. Sorry, Storage's bandits are in a good position, but the Sponge's Glaze are not. They are in a terrible clump, not in a line. They are trying to intercept, however, getting into a good line. Taking out two bandits, losing two of the number at the same time, but still, it's working out for them. Five Glaze get out where seven Glaze came in, killing two bandits. So, overall, the Sponge is still taking victories in battle. And at the same time, he is expanding, and that is important. Getting up a laser turret before he starts to set up these metal extractors. Which is an interesting choice. Coming in, trying to raid again, but not easily able to do so. Storage does have a decently well-protected base. He has Lotuses on both sides, and he does have Bandits on the side. Glaives are coming in again, trying to do what they can. Losing a Glaive for basically nothing. Trying to get rid of this Lotus before it comes up, but it's not going to work. He does manage to kill a Bandit, though. Keeping all of his Glaives alive. Very nice there by the Sponge. However, that was a risky thing. He just he kind of got lucky that the AI did not target his weakened Glaives. But the important thing is that the Sponge is expanding while he is attacking. Bear in mind, however, the Sponge is running low on energy. He has 13 energy right now because of this Wind Generator. Now 15. He's going to get 17. He's getting lucky that these Wind Generators are pretty high. I mean, they are high up. So their minimum power is going to be fairly high. But I'm fairly certain the minimum is not 2.5 on this map. However, it's still probably going to be greater than 1. So this is likely to be the cost-effective option. But yeah, he's been relying on E-Cell this entire game, while the Sponge, on the other hand, has been relying on power generators of his own. Of which he's actually starting to run out to. He's 20 metal. Both players have 20 metal. Storage, however, has 17... No, Storage is mostly on Reclaim. Never mind. Storage has, in fact, 15 metal base. 
plus reclaim. And there's a roach here, by the way. The glaives are not approaching it. They're actually going around seeing if Storch has expanded to the southeast, which he has not. In fact, Storch is mostly... He's expanded a little bit to the southwest, but he really has not done a whole lot of expansion. Been very safe about it, while the sponge has been expanding much faster. So Storage, not surprising, however, being that he is playing Shield Ball. It's going to be harder for him to move around the map to defend. And the Roach has been spotted, not been detonated, however. The Sponge is aware of it, but it could not defuse it, and this path is now pretty much blocked off. That Roach will stop any Glaives coming in. But the Glaives can raid. I mean, the thing is, is that Storage has been only raided from the southeast, and it looks like the Sponge is, not, is moving in a position to be able to raid from the southwest, but at the same time, Storage moving in from the southeast and... The Sponge is taking care of that. He does have Radar. He can see that the bots are coming in. And he's going to intercept them pretty well. But the Sponge has to be careful that he doesn't follow the Shield Balls. It looks like Storage is trying to pull them back into the Roach. And he is pulling the Roach forward. And that's exactly what he's doing. Using the Bandits to lure them back into the Roach. Bearing in mind, however, that Raider combat goes to the whoever retreats. I mean, you just don't run into bolts as much when you're retreating. So yeah, Raider combat is better on the retreat. But it's still something that... I should probably turn out map marks. It's still something that is likely a question of the Roach. And the Sponge does see the Roach. He is able to... Well, notice that he does have an automatic map marker for it. At the same time, getting Air Factory. The Sponge has 30 metal right now. And enough energy to support that. Well, Storage has 20 metal. And a Glaive sacrificing itself to defuse the Roach. And that is gone. On top of that, however, there are a dozen Bandits and an Outlaw. The Outlaw is too far behind to matter, but... Storage still able to prevent the Sponge from harassing too much. The Sponge can't easily harass around because he has to defend against these bandits. And he can't easily attack in because, because the bandits are going to stop it. But he is engaging and the bandits are in a bit of a clump. But unfortunately for the Sponge, most of his glaze were completely out of position. Losing, well, about an even trade between the two. But still, his glaives need to be microed well in order to survive. And he did lose a few of them. It was about three and th well, three and four from the looks of it. Four glaives for three bandits. Not a bad trade. But here's the big thing. Shadow coming in to take care of that outlaw. One more hit will take out the outlaw. And there's the other hit. Another shadow coming in at the same time. The glaives actually going to come in and try to deal with the outlaw before it becomes a problem. However, they are slowed a lot. And the bandits are going to do what they can to deal with them. But the bandits were damaged too much beforehand. And that, unfortunately, is for the sponge is still a win for storage. And now storage has been expanding consistently while he's been doing this. He does have... 30 metal right now. He has no caretakers, by the way. Storage has actually been accessing metal for some time. He has no second factory, no caretakers. He does have storage, however, which is appropriate, I suppose, but not really the best option. The best option, of course, is to build caretakers or build workers. He does have a convict here to assist build, getting another convict, probably going to get two or three convicts, and just push the factory with them rather than building a caretaker. I mean, he might build a caretaker, but I think he's just going to push the factory with convicts. Get more bandits and outlaws. No thug shield ball for him. And I'm not surprised. I mean, look at how big this map is compared to the units. The thug shield ball wouldn't get a quarter of the way across the map before, especially with the shadow in play. But yeah, it wouldn't get a third of the way across the map before the shadow just kills it. I mean, it would kill the felon most likely, or at the very least kill a lot of stuff in between or damage it heavily. And Rocco's are being set up. Double check the build queue here. Mostly glaives. Some Roccos were built, but not an infinite build. However, a dozen Roccos are still hard to deal with, even for a mostly bandit army. Apparently. I mean, the bandits are not the fastest things. They they would be able to counter Roccos, but it's a matter of cost. And there aren't that many of them. So 80 cost versus 90 cost. Yeah, if you have an even number of bandits to the Roccos, they should be able to win. It's just that that's going to be hard right now. And the commander goes down. The sponge takes out storage's commander... However, thankfully for storage, he was not depending on that for energy income. He was depending entirely on power plants. Granted, so many power plants have been built so far that neither player is really concerned right now. That being said, storage will have to worry about that more if he does decide to go for shield ball. And he is not. Going for some vandals. Granted, once he has the vandals built up, he may go for shield ball once he's safe. And a phoenix comes in to start taking care of these bandits. Nicely done. Getting rid of one while the Roccos help deal with the others. Now, at this point... The Sponge has four times the army of what Storch has, but this Roach trying to deal with it, and it cannot. Getting defused before it has the chance. And this Sponge, this game is his to lose at this point. He has four times the army. He has almost twice the metal income. Storch has been accessing quite a lot, and he is going for an airplane factory, but still, that excess has not been good for him. And Storch throws in the towel. That is game. Rather short game, but that was game nonetheless, so I will be back with another game shortly.
If that was too short for your taste, there'll be a longer game coming soon, so stay tuned for that.